So we want to talk about density. Density is the relationship between mass and volume, as we see right here, for an object. Now every substance has a different density, uh, and that relates to kind of how compact the molecules or atoms are within that substance. Now if we're thinking about what is a typical density that we're used to seeing a lot, uh, maybe the ubiquitous um, liquid that we can think of as water. Water has a density pretty close to one gram per milliliter. So that tells me if I have a milliliter of water, I have one gram of that. If I have 50 milliliters of water, I'd have 50 grams of that. Now, we can compare this density to other substances based upon whether something will float or sink in water. So for example, if I have this rock right here, uh, which we typically think of rocks as being more dense than water, if I drop it into water, it would sink if it was more dense than water. Now, as we see uh, in this example here, I put it on water and it actually floats. Uh, this is a piece of lava rock, pumice that is actually has a lower density than water, which is why it's sitting on the top. However, if we look at the quartz piece that I drop into water, uh, we see here that it sinks. Or the graphite piece that I, that I have here and I drop it in water, we see it sinks. Now that lets us know that that is more dense than water. It has a higher ratio for every unit volume of more mass. The density of our graphite is higher than for water. So this gives us an opportunity to compare densities. Now let's say we actually wanted to find the density of a substance. Well, for example, if we have that piece of graphite, which I go ahead and I put it on a balance, and I find that it's 85.4 grams. So now I know the mass of that solid substance that I have there, but I don't have an easy way to measure the volume. If I wanted to find the ratio of the mass per volume, I gotta measure what the volume is for that substance. We see it's a very irregular shape. It's not something that I can measure the length with and height and be able to quantify a volume very easily with that. Now let's say we have 141.0 milliliters of water inside a graduated cylinder. Now we take that piece of graphite and we drop it into that graduated cylinder and we notice that the volume goes up to 178.7 milliliters. Now the reason why the volume goes up is because we've added something into that. Now because our graphite again is more dense than water, it sinks to the bottom and the difference in volume is going to tell us the volume of graphite there. So if we take the difference in volumes, uh, and subtract them, we can find the volume of our graphite. So we have 178.7 milliliters with our graphite in water. If we subtract from that the volume that we just have of water, which is our 141.0 milliliters, we end up with 37.7 milliliters. So now we know the volume of our graphite corresponding to that mass of graphite. And now we have the ability to find our density. So we take our 85.4 grams of uh, our graphite divided by our 37.7 milliliters, and we find that we get a density of 2.27 grams per milliliter. So we have the ability to quantify our density based upon a known mass and a known volume that we were able to measure. Now, if we already knew what our density is, we could predict what volume we'd need for a specific mass or we could predict what mass we would have for a specific volume, because now we know the relationship between our mass and volume there. And we typically have these available for us in a table. We can find them if it's a known substance, such as our graphite here, or a known substance like a piece of iron uh, or a certain volume of water. And we have the ability to correspond our mass and volume with density. So we're gonna look a lot deeper in this uh, during our class time to come.